Good to go. Now, is this anyone's first safari today? Any first time explorers? Oh, a few first timers. Well, welcome. How many this returners do we time? have on board? Oh, lots of returners. Well, welcome back, returners. It's great to have you back. Now, if I could have everyone look straight up above you or straight up above your heads for just a second, you'll notice there is an animal spotting guide up there. That animal spotting guide can be used to help you identify some of the animals we will see here along the safari. We probably won't see all those animals listed on there, but usually we do get pretty lucky. Now, here we go. We are going to begin our safari here in the little Aturi forest. Now, here in the forest are a lot of animals that kind of like to camouflage themselves. So let's see what we can find. There is an Okapi way over there on the right hand side. Also, if you look over here to the left, way back there, there is a saddle build stork, a black and white stork back there. That saddle build stork, when it is fully grounded, will be about five feet tall and it has a wingspan of nine feet. But yes, there is an Okapi over here. Now you will notice this Okapi's legs, especially its hind legs, has beautiful hind legs. Kind of looks a little bit like it has zebra legs, but it is not related to the zebra at all. It is actually the closest living relative to the giraffe. And that is due to the fact that the Okapi and giraffe have a similar skull structure. They also have long prehensile tongues, just like giraffe. They can move, move in all different directions to help reach leaves off of trees and bushes. Now over across the water to the left, there's a black rhinoceros way back there, you can see. There's also another one that's facing towards us. We'll see over here on the left hand side. Now the black rhinos, when they are fully grown, they will weigh up to 3,000 pounds. Very, very large. Black rhinos, they are endangered. There's only about 5,000 black rhinos left on earth. Very, very endangered. Now coming up over here on the left hand side, up on this hill you'll see some bongos. Bongos, and down here too, bongos are known as the ghost of the forest because they are rarely seen. So we are very lucky for seeing a few bongos out here today. Now also if you kind of look up on that little hill to the left, there's a gray animal with white stripes up there. That is a greater kudu way up there. That's the tallest forest antelope, a little taller than the, than the bongos. Now we are starting to make our way out of the forest and we are going to be heading over to the Safi River. Now the Safi River is a great place to keep your eyes peeled on the surface of the water and on the banks of the river and we're going to see what animals we can spot out here today. If you look over on the right hand side in the water you'll see two Nile hippopotamus way over there. Yeah, Nile hippopotamus, when they are when they are uh, fully grown, they will weigh up to about 5,500 pounds. Very, very large, much larger than those black rhinos we just saw back there in the forest. Now hippos, they do spend a lot of their time in the water to keep from overheating, but they are not great swimmers. When they are in the water, they will generally just kind of stay pretty still or sometimes we'll see them walk or run across the river floor. And they can hold their breath underwater for about eight minutes at a time. Oh my goodness, and there is a little baby hippo we're going to see way over here on the bank of the river. You see her? Oh my gosh. You see her kind of back there? I know it's a little hard to see with this palm tree. I don't know the best. Yeah. Kind, kind of see her back there. She's about nine months old. Oh, she's coming a little towards us. We can, that's a pretty good view of her through the palm tree. Oh my goodness. Yep, little baby Greta is her name. Yeah, when she was born, she was born at about 85 pounds. Oh my goodness, look at her little baby hippo fat rolls. <laughs> so cute, I know. It's not very often she's out here on the banks of the river. That's really cute. Oh. <laughs> Now over here on the left hand side here, we're coming up to some Nile crocodiles. Now Nile crocodiles, when they are fully grown, they'll be about 16 feet long. Which, to put in perspective, is almost as tall as a giraffe. Nile crocodiles also have super strong jaws. 
they like to use to crush the bones of their prey. Now we are slowly making our way over to the savanna. And a good indicator to tell we are coming up to the savanna is this baobab tree you'll see over here on the right hand side. Now if you get a good look at that baobab tree, it kind of looks like it's upside down. But it's not upside down. It can just remain leafless for nine months out of the year. And inside that baobab tree's trunk, it actually stores gallons and gallons of water. So animals out here on the savanna can go up to that tree and poke a hole in it and get a drink of water, which is very useful and very helpful, especially during the dry season. It's also nicknamed the tree of life. Now coming up over here on the right hand side, we're going to see some and holy cattle. Holy cow, look at those horns. Those horns, when they are fully grown, will be about three to four feet long. And each horn weighs up to 10 pounds. And both males and females have horns. And there are a few giraffes we're going to get a little closer to in the distance. But coming up over here on the left hand side, we are coming up to a den. And that's a good indicator we could be seeing some predators. Let's see. Sometimes they might be on the other side of their den or just behind their den, just far enough behind where we aren't going to get a very good view of them. Yeah, they might just be right behind their den lying down. Let's see, let's go get a good view of this giraffe in just a second. Oh, but it looks like, is it in the road? It might be in the road actually, in front of that truck. A little bit of a giraffe jam. Yes. Yes. <laughs> no, 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 not Jungle Cruise. I don't know if you guys, can you see that giraffe a little bit or is it a little hard to see? You kind of see it? Yeah. Yeah? I don't know if you can see, but it is sticking out. It's very long prehensile tongue. They're long, they have long, like kind of purplish black tongues. Their tongues are about 18 inches long. So like on an adult, yeah, if you stick out your arm from the tip of your middle finger all the way to your elbow, that's about how long a giraffe's tongue is. There it is. Yeah. It's trying to reach that branch, so its feet are in the road. That's what, that's what we're waiting on right now. Giraffe, they are the tallest land animal. When they are fully grown, they'll be about 18 to 20 feet tall. And giraffe too, they have the same the same number of vertebrae in their neck that we do. Their back and neck that we do. Just seven. There we go. Changed its mind. <laughs> <laughs> now all these giraffe out here on the savanna, we're going to see they're all Maasai giraffe. One of nine different species of giraffe found in the world. But that's at the very end. Yes. Chains on them. So it's kind of some of the animals, especially the cattle, they'll kind of like to rub up against them to like file their horns. Yeah. Good question. Yep. Because you'll notice it's not all the far, you know, far up. You see, oh no, it is. Actually, it is. Never mind. Maybe it's for the giraffe too. I know it's for sure. It's for the for the cattle. Here's a good view of these giraffe, and we know these are Maasai giraffe, kind of based on their spots. We can try to get a little closer to these giraffe. You'll notice their spots are not very symmetrical, and they're kind of jagged around the edges. That's how we know it. That's how we know they're Maasai. Now giraffe too, they spend most of their day eating. You can see these giraffe doing over here. They love to eat. They spend about four or 20 hours of their day eating and they can eat up to 40 pounds of food a day. They only rest for about 30 minutes of their day though and most of the time they rest standing up and with their eyes open.
another good view of these and coley cattle and they are domesticated cattle if you have an and coley cow in africa it's actually seen as a sign of wealth there's giraffes just a little close to the road <laughs> Are they ruminants? What are? Are giraffe ruminants? Do they have four stomachs? I am not sure on that. I am not sure. You don't think they do? Yeah, it could be like chewing its butt. Yeah. They do do that, yes, yeah. Here's these cattle. Now these cattle, their horns are actually not hollow as one might think. They're made up of a honeycomb structure. And that honeycomb structure kind of acts as a cooling system for the cattle. Helps keep their body temperatures cool. Helps get their blood circulating a little bit better. We're gonna see all these wildebeest over here on the right hand side. One rolling litter. Wildebeest tend to stick together in a herd. In Africa, they actually migrate in a herd in a herd of about 1.5 they migrate in search of fresh grass. Another name for a group of wildebeest is called a confusion. A confusion of wildebeest. And they get that name because when they migrate across Africa, sometimes they just get a little confused about which direction they want to go. Yeah. But that's okay, that's understandable, you know, sometimes, or when they migrate across Africa, they migrate somewhere between 500 and 1,000 miles every year. Also, you'll notice these wildebeest, they have all these um, stripes kind of on them, and each wildebeest kind of has a different set of stripes, you can kind of see that over here too. It's because they're not really stripes, it's just sweat, it's just sweat on the wildebeest, just sweating just like us. Oh, and here's some more wildebeest, that's, in, that's a Patterson's Eland. The tan animal, Patterson Zealand, they're the largest antelope out here on the reserve. They stand at about six feet tall to shoulders. And we have just entered elephant country and there is an elephant over here you're gonna see. This is an African elephant. We know it's an African elephant though, kind of by the shape of its ears, which is a little hard to see from here, but the shape of its ears does look like the continent of, or shaped like the continent of Africa. Elephants with their very large ears, they have excellent hearing. They can hear other elephants up to six miles away. And they can hear bees from pretty far away too. And elephants are very afraid of bees. Now over here on the left hand side, we're coming up to some greater flamingos. And if you notice on the island, do you see those little gray, gray birds? Those are baby flamingos. Yeah, they're like three weeks older. There's a few of them that are only like a week and a half, two weeks old too. Yeah, little flamingos. Now a group or gathering of flamingos is known as a flamboyance. A flamboyance of flamingos, which is my favorite group name out of all the animals. Flamboyance of flamingos. Now flamingos, they get their pretty pink color due to all the shrimp that they eat and that is due to the beta carotene found in the shrimp. So those baby flamingos, as they age and get older and eat more shrimp, then they'll get more pink. Another elephant you'll see to the left. Elephants, when they're fully grown, they'll weigh up to about 14,000 pounds. And elephants can live to be up to about You'll notice this kind of orangish brownish color mud over there. That's a big mud pit or mud wallow. Or sometimes we'll see white rhinos rolling around in the mud or wallowing in the mud. And they like to do that because they have very sensitive skin. So by rolling around in the mud and getting mud all over their bodies helps protect their skin. Kind of like a, a natural sunscreen and even acts as a natural bug repellent for the white rhinos as well. Now over here on the left hand side I do see spots. I do see two cheetahs over here on the left hand side. One's walking around, one's lying down. You see the cheetahs under the under the branches walking around? There's those cheetahs. Now cheetahs, they run super fast. They run at an average speed of about 60 miles per hour. And they can get to that 60 mile per hour speed in about three seconds. But they can only maintain that speed for about 100 yards, for about the length of a football field. So not necessarily endurance runners, more sprinters. 
they do most of their hunting during the day. They have better eyesight during the day. And they do most of their hunting during the day too. And the, the fastest cheetah on record is there fully grown. And it, I just heard on my reading, there's another white rhino just, just ahead in the road ahead of us too. He's not going to be very happy with me that I'm right here, though, but we're going to try to move a little bit. I'll move for you. There you go. Up to about five, 5,000 pounds. White rhinos have very good eyesight. They can only see about 30, 35 feet in front of them. Still right behind us. He's right behind us. Okay, now he's getting out of the road. No. No. Kind of. No. Not at all. He's, he's kind of out of the road. He's in the he's in the dirt. I can see him back there. Oh my goodness. And there is a baby white rhino over here to the left hand side. You guys are gonna see with mom. Yeah, this baby white rhino is about seven and a half months old. Already weighs over seven hundred pounds. Big baby. Oh, and there is a lion over here on the left hand side you'll see over here. Way over here. It's a female lion. There are some water bucks over here you're going to see as well. Water bucks get their aquatic environments. And if you look on the ground, there are some ostrich eggs as well to the right hand side. Look at those ostrich eggs. Yeah. Must be some ostrich somewhere around here. Must have laid some eggs. Now, ostrich, since they are the largest bird, they obviously have the largest eggs. Each of those eggs weighs up to three pounds, which is about as much as two dozen chicken eggs. We are slowly starting to make our way out of the savannah. And we are heading over to the Magani Glen. Now, the Magani Glen is home to one of the warden's posts. And the warden practices a number of conservation efforts. But the warden also has little Nigerian dwarf goats you're going to see over here on the left hand side, which are small goats. Now, the warden uses these goats for grazing purposes and for dairy so he can sell milk at the local market. The bongos and the black rhinos, they are actually all facing each one of their habitats, which isn't good, but you know, a good thing and an easy thing and a small thing, each of us. What we can do practically every day of our lives is to make sure we practice so we can help save the forest, save these animal habitats, these animals' homes, and hopefully I'll make a small difference here in our world. Now here in Harambe, we never like to say goodbye because that is far too sad. We'll go follow James. Say hi, James. There's a squirrel. We got to see lots of babies on this one. The babies were super cute. We got to see the baby hippo too, but then she stopped in front of the tree. And then we couldn't see the baby hippo. But that was super cool. Which way do we go? Oh, this way. Alright, so that one was one of our cooler ones too because we got to see all the babies. Baby flamingos, baby hippo, and baby rhino. And then kind of see the back. Yeah, there was no one on our bench and no one behind us so we could see sideways. We could both scoot to each side to see, and then we could also videotape behind us and see like the rhino following us. It's the best time to do this part. I know, that was pretty awesome. Mom, so, today, I guess. At least today it is. So I don't know where we're headed now. Are we going to Expedition Everest? I think so. All right. I'll probably start to storm that. James says two safari rides is enough. Well, we can do it again if you want. And we will go. You want to do it again? The expedition Everest. I don't know what we we'll do. We can do it again if you want. Uh, 